Okay, they dumped out their hand. This could be good and bad. If we can find our Doom Scar, this is really good. Um, obviously they get their Muxus, which is horrible. Or they get a Brash Taunter. Interesting. Do they not have Muxus? Maybe are they ethical goblin players? <laughs> My fair citizens, Sodium City, we have All Hail Vito. Now this is one of my favorite combo decks that I kind of came up with a while ago. Uh, it was really when Vito very, very first was announced back in M21. I didn't really revisit this since the pre-release of M21. I did it uh, when the streamers had the early access things. So, I mean, this must have been like a year ago, uh, a little bit more than a year ago, maybe. Uh, it was a while ago. So whenever M21 came out, this is kind of when I came up with the concept. This is when I played it and it was very good. So a lot of people use exquisite blood with Vito to do the infinite combo, but really that's kind of fucking lame. I don't do that. You know me. I don't do any of the lame combos that a lot of people do. Yeah, they're kind of tried and true, but the stuff that I do is a lot more unique and um, what's the word? Worse. There you go. Worse is the word. However, in this specific instance, I think that Vito is actually way more suited to be paired with Revenge. So Vito is a three mana creature. It's a one three legendary. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. That's awesome. It's really, really good. We love it. It's just good in general. Now, the next card that we're going to utilize is Revenge. Now, this is a split card of Revival and Revenge. So the Revival part of it is just two mana. Return target card with converted mana cost of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield creature card specifically and since veto is three mana this is just fantastic so if they kill your veto you can bring it back but also the split card has revenge on it which is the other part of the win condition so it's a split revival and revenge does two things in the deck it's both extremely good for recovery of your combo but it also is the finisher for your combo so revenge is a six mana sorcery you double your life total and target opponent loses half of their life rounded up. So this is very important to note because you're doubling your life total. If you do that, you're gaining life. So if you're at 20 life and you gain 20 because you're doubling your life, Vito again reads, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So they're gonna lose 20 life. However, they're losing half their life already. So. If they're at 40 life, then yeah, you're going to half their life down to 20. And if you're at 20, you're going to do 20 more damage to them. Or no, it's life loss, but you get the point. And so it's just going to flat out kill them. If you're both at 20, you're going to double your life total and they're going to go down to 10 and you're going to do 20 damage to them, taking them down to negative 10, right? If you're at 10 life, you're going to double it and go up to 20. If they're at 20, they're going to go down to 10 and then Vito is going to finish off with the last 10. So this is a very, very powerful swing in this one card revenge. Outside of that, we're really just using a new card called Inspiring Statuary. Now, this is a card that one of my viewers kind of brought to my attention. I didn't really think twice about it. I kind of just thought it was trash. Um, I've looked at it briefly in the past, but never really gave it any attention. It's just a three man artifact where non-artifact spells you cast have Improvise. So that means artifacts can help you cast spells, each artifact tapped for one colorless. So this is great for artifacts that you control that just, they, they're not actual mana rocks, you're turning them into colorless mana rocks. So with that, we're running cards like Fountain of Renewal. Again, Fountain of Renewal, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life. So that alone is fantastic because it's gonna keep our life total high for revenge to get us more life and also veto every single turn on our upkeep when we gain a life, veto is gonna do one damage to that opponent. So it's good on many levels, but also when we have statuary out, we can tap our renewal for one mana. And since Fountain of Renewal isn't doing anything anyway, 
then tapping it for a colorless is just like amazing. We do have some other things, of course, uh, that are just artifacts in general. We're using Thermatic Compass, which is amazing. One of my favorite cards. Uh, we are also using uh, Thraben Inspector, which when it comes into play, you create a colorless clue, uh, which is nice. It's just a one mana artifact and you get a one, two blocker out of it. Um, Glass Casket is also very, very good because you get to exile a creature but it's still an artifact, so you can tap it for mana. Again, very, very cool. Uh, and then we just added Treasure Map at the very end, which I think was a great addition. It can tap itself for a colorless if you don't wanna pay one to start scrying. However, when the Treasure Map flips into a land and you create the three treasures, you don't actually have to sack those treasures to produce mana. They can produce colorless mana when you have the Statuary up. So this is very important to note. And of course, the other card that we have to keep our life total up is Cosmos Elixir. Now, this is one of the more important, or rather, one of the more expensive cards in our deck. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting life total, so more than 20. Uh, otherwise, you gain two life. So this is just really powerful. It helps your card draw, uh, but it also keeps your life total above 20, which is exactly what you want to do when you're casting Revenge. You wanna be able to double your life total to do a copious amount of damage. All that being said, you really just wanna to try to Veto and Revenge in the same exact turn to be the safest. So Veto is three mana, Revenge is six mana, need nine mana total. So you just need a combination of four lands and five artifacts, which really isn't that difficult to do. If you have your treasure map out you flip your treasure map by turn four. Treasure map flips into a land, creates the three tokens, um, and then you play your statuary out the turn prior, and then you just have all of those artifacts and all those lands already there. So you play Veto, you Revenge, and you win. Is it super reliable? Not necessarily. However, with all the changes that we've just recently made, it's a lot more reliable and a lot more robust than it used to be. Now, normally I would say, yeah, you can take these cards and kind of mess around with it. The main part of the combo, of course, is Veto and Revenge, and you can pretty much put that in whatever card pile that you really want to. Uh, we just ended up adding in Statuary and a bunch of other artifacts just to kind of help with the pseudo ramp, and then add some other life gain things to it. All that being said, I believe the list is very tight the way it is right now. The only thing I could recommend is possibly taking out more lands and adding a couple other really cheap artifacts or something along the lines, but it's so tight knit right now the way it is. Uh, you just, you have to have four vetoes, you have to have four revenges. It's really just a matter of finding those combo pieces. So if you can find them, that's the most important, and that's one of the reasons why we added the four treasure maps. So maybe find a place for either more card draw um, or more scrying, maybe Maze Mind Tome. Uh, that would be the only other thing to do. However, uh, it doesn't give you lasting value after the first you know, four scries or four card draws. So you will have to keep that in mind as well. If you wanna end up building this deck, it's gonna set you back 39 rares and zero mythics. So obviously another one of my budget decks, but it is the truth. I will take this deck. I will definitely put this into ranked going forward. So if you wanna check that out, make sure to go ahead and follow me over at twitch.tv slash striderstone. I stream five days a week, every day except Monday and Thursday. Schedule in the description below. And as for yesterday's comment question of the day, I asked you, which five drop creature do you think is the most fun to play? Here are your answers. And if you want your comment featured in these videos, make sure that you answer the comment question of the day every single day, seven days a week in the comment section below. And if you want to see more veto decks like this, then make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and the bell notification come out of the video seven days a week, every single day have been for more than a year. Let's go ahead and do that and then let me know if there's anything specific down in the comment section below. Stay salty and enjoy the games. Let's see how this goes. I was playing this a little bit on stream the other day. Uh, we were kind of building it 
but we had to change it a lot. The curve is so low to the ground that I just had to end up taking out a bunch of lands. <laughs> Which is very, very surprising to say, but we had to go down to 20 lands. Because again, we have almost... Like everything in our deck is uh, most expensive card is Doomscar, which we foretell anyway. So improvise. All non-artifact spells we cast have improvise. This basically means that if we have this artifact out and this artifact out. Hmm. So if we have both this and this out, and then these two lands, we can cast this without even having to tap. Or without even having to have all three lands out. Because we can just tap one of these for mana instead. Ooh. Damn it! Of course. Wait. Wow. A counter spell with improvise. All right, didn't expect that. So you just saw what it could do. They cast, they tapped a fucking ornithopter in a renegade map to counter a spell. Huh. Interesting. All right, so the first game was a little bit weird. Uh, I'm worried to take this into actual ranked right now uh, i'm not I'm not confident in what it can do i've never played around with improvise before so if you have veto on the battlefield and you're able to cast revival revenge you just win the game so that's the combo that we're going for essentially but i don't know how reliable it is i feel that it's going to be a lot more reliable But now I kind of want to mess around with Inspiring Sanctuary a bit more. Because it gets me... It gives me a lot of bad ideas. Being able to pay stuff, or being able to cast stuff really, really cheap is nice. You just have to have the artifacts. But then again, you can, like, you can tap Glass Casket. So once it exiles something, you can actually tap it. Oh no, Thought Karen. Oh, no, they didn't. Hmm. Interesting. I probably didn't need to do that. Probably should have searched for a land. But I'm not really short on lands. Oh, yeah. This is the deck I made yesterday? This is so familiar. This is 100% my deck, right? I'm not, I'm not crazy. Um, let's just be aggressive with our land drops. So not this turn, but next turn. 
Yeah, we needed to get Vito back on the battlefield because they were going to exile it with the Binding of the Titans. There's so many things that they can do here. If they... if ooh. I mean, I know the deck. We, we lose. No! <laughs> ah, how could you? You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Okay. All right. Hmm. Temple of Milady. I think they have an outdated version because I believe I took out all the temples. Ooh, they get the glass casket? Ooh, no, they get that. Okay. I mean, that kind of sucks, but, you know, whatever. Hmm. I know I could have blown that up with the Heliod intervention, but I don't necessarily want to. Yeah, so they exiled our, they exiled our Vito, and I don't have a Revival Revenge, but, oh, and they also got rid of our, <laughs> our thing, whatever it's called, the Statuary. Uh, that doesn't help us. Makes an artifact, but doesn't really do anything. Okay. Your death touch has death touch. Aha! We could just lose. They haven't put down a Tamiyo or an Ashiok yet. Um... I think... We're looking really hard for our shit now. Hmm. Definitely don't want that. Pog? Okay. You like it? Please don't. I mean, that's a Doom Scar. We know that that's a Doom Scar. Um. We need a veto. Three and then one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay. So if we get a veto, we can win. We have the mana to do that. No. 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 Sweet card, but no. All right, do we live? Do we live? One turn, one turn, come on. Okay. Okay. Think. Unless they put instant speed interaction in my deck. This is definitely my deck, right? Pog. <laughs> I love it. It's it's great. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Pudding Eater, for participating. I appreciate it. In the experiment. I kinda wanna 
I don't know exactly what I would change. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe add treasure map. Um, because treasure map making the treasures is very, very good. We're able to scry three times with it, which is nice. Obviously, but once it makes it three treasures, uh, the treasures will essentially be ramp without us having to sacrifice the treasures. They will be legitimate ramp. Um... Another Yorian deck. So this is a bad hand against Yorian. Hmm. It's a good card though. All of these are good cards. That's a one turn. One, two, three. We don't have that many lands. That's why I'm hesitant. I'm putting back a land. Because if I don't have three lands, I can't actually use compass. And that is not good. Doomscar is fine, possibly. Sultai again. Uh, if they tap out, I might Statuary. Two top. Hmm. So... Our statuary gets us, like, a fuck ton of mana right now. We have a lot of artifacts on the battlefield. Oh, let's get white source. Let's do that, let's do that. It's pokey. Uh, getting lands, obviously guaranteeing land drops is excellent. Uh, it also thins out our deck. Do we care about that? Uh, really, players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spell. Okay, that's fine. Um... It's just to cast spells and abilities. So we're not worried about it. So we're not casting anything. This is like a four color deck. Uh. Do this, let's do that. I don't know if any of these are the right moves. I see. Hmm. And that's spells and abilities? Oh, fuck me. Fuck me. I mean, they're tapped out, right? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. We're able to get the wrath off, but... So we can Statuary, Statuary, Fountain of Renewal. They're gonna throw me in the... Yeah, they're gonna throw that at my face, probably? I doubt they hit my creature with that. There's no reason to. Okay. 
I guess the control works out. Sure. This is good because we get to untap their Yorian every single time that they swing in. Okay. That's fucking annoying. Uh, it's this deck. I think I have four mana creature, another Yasharn? Wait, I thought it was... Wait, it's the same? Oh, the same or less? Yeah, it's the same or less. We need our veto. Yeah, that's right. I forgot they had that. That's super unfortunate. Fuck! Yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Uh, I don't think they get another deputy detention. They might get another knight of autumn though. Just for whatever reason, just to blow up my fountain of renewal. Gives me some life. I just have to hope they can't kill both of those again. Because now if we get a veto... We win. Oh, shit. Shit. Let's untap that. Let's untap that. All right, come on, veto off the top. Veto off the top. Right, that's all we need. So they get their deputy detention again because they have to get rid of those. I'm actually surprised they didn't get the glass casket. So they could have got the glass casket and then Veto. Nope. Not a veto. Not a veto. Okay. I have the mana. I'm thinning out my deck. I still have one more Doom Scar. Four vetoes, 11% chance. Oh shit. Forgot Kenrith can do that. Fuck. Oh, 
Well, that's unfortunate. Damn. Yeah, we just needed the one card. We just needed the one fucking card. So close. So close. Well, hopefully we don't... Uh, I mean, the only problems we're having right now, okay? The only problem we're having is not drawing cards. And... This was the point that I pointed out when we were building the deck initially. Was the simple fact that we aren't drawing cards. So, I really think I will have to add in the two Immortal Suns that I kind of wanted to add. Maybe Treasure Map is the move because that, I mean it doesn't, it can draw cards obviously. It can draw cards because once it flips it has the treasures, blah 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 blah. It's weird, because I had so many one-drops, and I just automatically did Authority of the Console before even considering these, which is weird, because I probably should have started with that. But it doesn't matter. We'll do both of these next turn. Okay. Mm hmm So we're getting artifacts. Technically, Authority of the Console is the only non-artifact. We could cut it, in theory. This makes an artifact, so that doesn't necessarily count. Okay, cool. Getting life is good. Sure. No problems. Great card. They have Chalupa Cobra, so we know they're running single target removal. Same with Elspeth's Nightmare. Sacrifice that to draw a card. I assume it's to look for an answer to Vito. Uh, interesting. Okay. As long as they don't kill it, we're mostly fine. Oh, oh! They don't. They don't even know the combo. Still think we need card draw. What is early card draw? We are running four of the. We're running four of the fucking Fountain of Renewals, right? So we should be able to safely run the Phyrexian Arenas. But those aren't artifacts, so they don't they don't count as mana towards our combo. But it is card draw towards our combo. I still think we might need to add maps in here. Mm. Let's try to find a veto. Hello. Hey, it's Pudding Eater again. Did they add me to friends? No, they didn't. And maybe they can get off the combo this time. Oh, they're they're doing Yorian. Interesting. Oh, it's a different deck. Okay, different deck. Let's do this. I forgot how much I love Thermatic Compass. Card is so fucking good. 
Oh, you missed a land drop? JK! You do have to pay three mana for it, but... I would, I would say it's a small price to pay for never missing a land drop. Good, good. Then next turn, I can... Inspector and Compass to get a land. Or I can foretell Doom Scar and Compass. For Helion. Interesting. I do take five damage here. Maybe I did need to just throw down the inspector instead of that second compass. I'm not sure. Gaunty? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Anyway, last week. Okay. We don't have any exile effects, so this is pretty bad. Uh, so we're going to do this into this. Into this. And then foretell Doomscar or thin out the deck. I think we thin out the deck because it's the last turn that we have. It's, it's the last turn that we have um, to actually get something. Because once we put down seven lands, both of these compasses was flipped. And again, all we need is the combo. That's it. Once we get the combo, everything's fine. But we have to get it. <laughs> so I think that is really all we need. We just need card draw. Don't look at it. Stop looking at my shit. He's done. That was rude. Damn, that sucks. That really, really, really fucking sucks. Oh, shit. Oh, they took it. That's what they did. They took our fucking Heliods. That's what they fucking did. God damn it. Shit. Mm, that's not good. All right, so we can draw land with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need, again, we need, no, we need 10 mana total. As Gaunti is three, or Vito is three, and Revenge is six. Wait, nine. That's nine. Math. Three plus six is nine. Math. Hmm. Okay, not what we wanted, not what we wanted. Appalling, appalling I tell you. Huh. This will help me. Uh, I mean, it'll, it'll help us stay in the game if we're close to dying. Like, if we go down in life pretty low. 
which I might just... If I don't draw something useful... Stop taking my shit. Just need my veto. Just need my veto! I did not need to shock that in because obviously it had whatever I just fucking played. It had improvise. <laughs> I just missed out on like four life. Damn. It's fine though. Sag. Okay. Not the card we wanted. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm glad we did that before because now we're taking six damage a turn. They blew up two of our compasses. We're super fucked from that. I don't know what they... I don't know what they took. That's the problem I have right now. Because if they took two of our vetoes, our hopes... Okay. Elixir? I mean, that sucks because I would have loved an elixir. It's card draw. Okay. Dinrova. Sure. Fuck. That's so bad. Land? Don't want that. Did they not attack last turn? I feel like they didn't attack last turn. God damn it. They took two. They took two of our elixirs. Hmm. I don't know what they're going to pick, but... Fuck, they're, it's both fucking terrible. It's both fucking horrible, yeah. <laughs> Why the Risen Reef, though? Risen Reef seems like a really, really odd choice. Because none of these are... That's an elemental. Seems so weird. Hmm. Okay. Still not getting anything useful. Um. So that Yorian super fucks us. The Yorian everything. Give me my fucking veto. So this is fine. I can discard. So once they blink everything. <sighs> yeah, they can't steal anything, which is nice, but. Yeah, they just hostage take her their own Yorian. Bounce my authorities. 
They don't bounce my lands, which is nice of them. I don't know why they don't. I mean, I gain a lot of life from it, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Okay. Both of the, I mean, part... Them getting Yorian means that Panharmonicon was going to be, like, a fucking problem. I mean, they're still going to get it from... They're still going to get it just by simply blinking Yorian. I don't know. God damn it! Can't get my goddamn. Uh, can't find it. 27, 14, 14 percent chance. Unless they cast it, obviously. Unless that card's a veto, which it could be. Okay, are we dead? Four, eight. Yeah, we are. Damn, I had the next turn. God damn it, it took going down to how many cards? 25 cards to find one of our vetoes. That's all we needed was one veto. It took down to 20, 20 fucking five. 20 fucking five down. Jesus Christ. All right. So there's definitely a problem with our card draw slash fixing of mana. Or not really fixing of mana, but fixing of cards. Trying to get exactly what we need. We can't find our combo of Veto and Revival Revenge fast enough. Um, so I am going to take out one of the authority of the consoles um, because usually we only really need three that and it's not an artifact um, and I kind of want to add maps treasure maps because not only in and of itself as an artifact it also enables you to scry it turns into a land which is nice eventually because we are very low on lands I'm cutting another land but it also flips or when it flips it makes three artifacts which is very good when we have inspiring sanctuary obviously it just gives us access to three more mana that we can tap again we don't really need that much mana we really just need nine so the faster we can get our combo and the more that we can get the better <sighs> yeah the faster we can get it if we can get nine mana as quickly as possible that's ideal. That's why statuary is really good to have early. We have a ton of early stuff to do. Uh, and that's why I believe getting the statuary out early isn't necessary. Because the only colored cards that we have that are non-artifacts are two Doom Scars, two Heliod's Interventions, which can actually be a win condition if we don't have a Revival Revenge. We have four Revival Revenges, so that puts us at eight. Eight total. Last casket, but that's only two. Uh, it's only two mana, so I don't even know if I would include that. And then our vetoes. So if we have Inspiring Sanct Statuary out, I want to say Sanctuary every time. If we have it out, I mean, is four necessary? Do we need four treasure maps? We might be able to go down to 3 3. 
19 lands? Let's try that. Well, the first game we played, we got trounced on after the changes. The second one, opponent made a, a couple misplays, but we absolutely destroyed them, but not in the way we would normally want to. They just kind of surrendered. Uh, I get. I don't know if it was just they didn't have anything or something, but... Oh, dumps like a truck. Let's go. We got a screen cap that one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, in the Discord server, we actually have a channel dedicated to opponents' names. Because they're fucking hilarious. They make me laugh. Some people have great names. Luris, not a good one for us to go up against. Hmm. So next turn, we'll Fountain of Renewal and Inspector. And then hopefully we get a land. Basically what it comes down to. The chances of us surviving until that turn? <laughs> we have to we have to get something to exile it. We have to get a glass casket. But the chance of us getting to nine mana is fucking slim to none. Slim to none. But getting a third mana gives us a statuary. Which is very, what the fuck is that? Okay. Um. Card is so fucking. What? I mean, it was a good top deck. It's what we needed. Getting one life a turn is still not great. Yeah, luckily they were tapped out. I don't know if they were going to be able to do anything. Another another life. We'll take it. We'll take it. Take it. Okay. So one, two, three, four. That's four mana. Five, six, seven. Two more. Two more mana and we win. Two more. So if we get one land, we can Elixir, and then we win the next turn. We have a blocker. Well... Actually, we just win next turn unless they kill that veto, right? Do they have removal? Do they have removal? Okay, they didn't play their Lurus. Okay, they're going for the kill for sure. Beautiful. GG's. Tight. Auto pay. Eh, 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 eh. Boom! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> we had three land. We had three land and we were able to do that. Oh, it feels good to 
fully auras like that. I'm so glad they didn't top deck like gods. <laughs> so glad. Fuck auras. Fuck them. Let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. So yeah, getting a getting a one drop is very, very important here. And then obviously having a two drop this is a very good hand. Fucking goblins. Oh shit. Um, so I am going to map next turn. All right, we have the combo. We have to make it to nine mana. That's not going to be easy. They didn't play a... Everything's one cheaper. We can play. We can play Glass Casket if we get it, right? It's a good card, but not one we want. So we can kind of maximize our mana here. So if we play our compass, what we can do next turn, we can activate compass, play the land, scry, or we can play this instead. We have a land, so I don't know if it's necessary. I think maybe the one life is more important even though it's only one life every turn it's still one life right shit well they can play muxus yikes it's five damage hmm Yeah, this is not good at all. Uh, lands are cool. Not really something we need. We have one in our hand. Yeah, and this just utilizes our mana. We don't have to shock anything in. Three, four, five, four, seven. We'll have seven mana available. Uh, we may have to just cast revenge next turn. Okay, they dumped out their hand. This could be good and bad. If we can find our Doom Scar, this is really good. Um, obviously, they get their Muxus, which is horrible. Or they get a Brash Taunter. Interesting. Do they not have Muxus? Maybe are they ethical goblin players? <laughs> I'm dead next turn, regardless. If I don't get... Um... Do that. And then that's one, two, three, four... Nine... Ten? It's exactly ten. If I keep that... So, easy on the war chief, or no, not the war chief, the chieftain. Um, 
Is it worth sacrificing two treasures? Yeah. If Vito lives and we live, we win. Right? You know what they have in their hand. Everything's tapped. That's so actually fine. I didn't even think about that. They just gave us a bunch of life. That's all they did. They sacrificed a creature, and we gained a bunch of life. Yep. Authority of the console for the win. Easy game. Easy game. Beaten goblins, as we should. With zero board wipes. <laughs> Aha! Take that. Easy. GG's. Ping! Die. 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 Ah. Oh. oh, come on, man. At the end of the day, All Hail Vito ended up going 9 and 7. This wasn't the greatest deck. However, after we made the changes, it was a little bit better. I believe that the treasure map actually helped a lot more than I initially thought it would be. Um, being able to add it the first time, uh, we're still having some troubles with Mono Red Burn, which is just kind of a thing that happens. However, for some reason, we beat it twice here. I don't exactly know how, but we did. Oh, one of them was goblins, that's why. <laughs> but we did beat it once because of that. After the full changes, though, we are 3 0. It's not a lot to really give an accurate representation of how well the deck is doing. But obviously, we have the 2 and 2 and then the 3 0. So it's about 5 and 2 right now, I would say, at a comfortable level. Um, that is going to be the core part of the deck and where uh, the base level of what I want to start with if I wanted to branch out and kind of expand on it more. So at this level, I would be much more comfortable taking it into ranked because it's a it's quite a bit more consistent. If anything, I would add maybe a Maze Mind Tome, but I have no idea what I would take out at that point. Right now, it's almost too concrete and too solid to go anywhere else. The only other thing that you could really take out for additional scry power would be parts of your combo, in which case it's probably not even worth it at that time. It's better just to dig for your combo more than anything else. So maybe even go down to the, the mono red status of lands to where you're going down to 13 lands or something crazy like that. Um, but that that's probably what you will want to stick with is what it's at right now as far as the matchups are concerned currently it was really only hitting a wall on Sultai um, we did run into an elves matchup which was definitely not good for us we only have two board wipes so if we don't get our combo off in time or if they're just able to flood the board and ram into us on turn three or turn four, then we're just going to lose. Um, it's just one of the things that happens with this deck. It's quite unfortunate. Um, if we run into combo decks and they combo off before we can, it's just something that we kind of have to deal with. If we can't get rid of it, we just have to die with it. Yo, what up YouTube? Yeah, we going here Strider. <laughs> Come on, you didn't really think that I was that type of person, did you? Thank you everyone so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you were even a little bit entertained by this video, please make sure to let me know down below. And if you have anything that you would like to see next, go ahead and leave that there too. And make sure to check out my live stream five days a week, every day except Sunday and Thursday. Stream times down below.